How did the solution to the rabbit problem illustrate the strategies of problem solving? What did we do here? Well, we first stated the problem and then we uh, tried to understand what was going on by seeing uh, maybe what would happen as rabbits start reproducing. We might think kind of vaguely about that uh, and then solidify our thinking by making a plan. The plan in this case was simply to list the three categories of rabbits. Well, the two categories, immature pairs and mature pairs, and then of course the total. By making this table, we arrived at a better understanding of what goes on, and we also solved the problem by carrying out the plan. Now, we should go back and check, and, and that's kind of what we were doing when we were checking to see how these numbers made sense, how the 8 came from the 3 and the 5, and so forth. We also would want to maybe go back and check the arithmetic to make sure we hadn't done anything foolish. Um, we might even want to write out the sequence, and I'm going to do that here. The sequence goes 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, and we could continue the sequence, see if it makes sense. Uh, what would the next number be? Well, we would add the 5 and the 8 to get 13. And then we'd add the 8 and the 13 to get 21. Again, why are we doing that? When we added the 8, that was the number of rabbits we had two months ago, which will be the number of mature rabbits we had a month ago. And they'll produce 8 baby pairs. So that's the number of new pairs we have contributing to this 21. And the 13 is the total number of rabbits we had before. They all survive, and we have 21 rabbits. Then 34, and so on. Now, there are all kinds of properties of this sequence. We can see that the sequence is consistent with those properties. Let's now look at another problem in relation to this whole idea of problem solving. How many squares do we have in this picture? Think about that for a minute and see if you can devise a plan for solving this problem. How many squares are there here? Okay, well, let's see. You, you might think immediately, well, there are nine squares. We see nine squares there. Okay, well, there's more than that. There's the big square. That makes ten. Are there any other squares? Think about it. Pause. Think. Now, you see that, well, we've also got a square here and a square here, and maybe a square somewhere else. Okay, how could we devise a strategy for solving this problem, making sure that we count all the squares? Again, think about it. Pause and think. Okay, I'm going to suggest one strategy. We see that the squares we have vary from one unit squares up to this big old three unit square, and there appear to be some two unit squares in the picture. Now, we could go through and draw all those squares, but we might miss something. But let's think about it now. Okay, let's say we got, uh, they're clearly, well, okay, our plan. How many one unit squares? How many two unit squares? How many three unit squares? It's clear, we can see very clearly that there are three rows of three one-unit squares, which is nine. How many two-unit squares do we have? How many three-unit squares? Well, the three-unit is easy. There's only one of them. The whole picture is only a three-unit square. Now, the two-unit squares might be a little more complicated. Let's see. What could we have? Well, we could trace a two-unit square. We could put one right here in the upper left hand corner and then we could put a different one in the upper right hand corner and then we could go toward the lower left and then toward the lower right there are four three unit squares so we're going to say well we think that there are four three unit squares uh, one for each corner and by that I mean there's one four unit square that contains this corner. That would be the one that comes out here, or one two unit square. Uh, one two unit square that contains this corner comes out here. One two unit square that goes down into this corner. One two unit square that goes into this corner. Are there any other two unit squares? Well, if we try to take this square and move it anyplace else, 
we can only move it up one, we can move it to the left one, or we can move it up and to the left one. Those are the only movements we could make with this square in the lower right hand corner. And those all lead to squares that we already have. So we're pretty sure we've got them all. So we add up the 9, the 4, and the 1, and we get a total of 14 squares. And there's one strategy for finding the squares. We can then go back and look again at the problem, make sure there's nothing we've missed, check our arithmetic, and then maybe go away with some confidence that we solved the problem correctly.